Well, last night was our first show of the year, so we decided to take a minute to talk about the biggest issue facing this country going forward. No, it's not higher GDP growth, despite what some think tank people will tell you. It's not, definitely not, some obscure Middle Eastern hellhole our leaders claim we should pol be policing forever. It's not even illegal immigration, as big a problem as that is, and as much time as we have spent talking about it. The real problem is families. America used to be the best country in the world for families. Americans could get married and afford to raise their own children. If your kids worked hard, you could expect they'd be a little more successful maybe than you were. That was called the American dream. And for a small group of affluent people, it still exists. They're still living like it's 1965, and good for them. But for everyone else, that dream is dying. America's middle class is in decline because middle class American families are declining. So the question is, why is that happening? Well, there are a lot of reasons it's happening, but a major driver of family collapse, the one that nobody ever talks about for some reason, is simple economics, and we explained it last night. Study after study has shown that when men make less than women, women generally don't want to marry them. Now, maybe they should want to marry them, but they don't. Over big populations, this causes a drop in marriage, a spike in out-of-woodlock births, and all the familiar disasters that inevitably follow. More drug and alcohol abuse, higher incarceration rates, fewer families formed in the next generation. Now, let's be clear about that statement. First of all, it is factually true, and that's the essential test of anything. That's the test that we go by. In 2015, a study by the decidedly non-conservative Brookings Institution found that falling male wages caused about a quarter of the decline in marriage rates over the past 35 years. Two years later, MIT researchers found that when factories close, marriage rates go down and single parenthood becomes more common. And that, as you could guess, causes a higher proportion of children to wind up on drugs or in prison. So it's not a small thing. And by the way, many other studies have reached the same conclusions over long periods of time. This is real. So what we said is a statement of fact. We wish it weren't. In an ideal world, none of this would matter. The marriage rate never would have declined when manufacturing died, and everything in middle America would be fine. But it's not, and we're not in charge of that. All we can do is tell the truth about what happened, which we did, because it actually matters. And that turned out to be too much for the people who believe it's their job to prevent you from knowing why your country is going down the tubes. Those people got very angry. Here's a selection. <laughs> it's like, you know, you know it, it reminds me. It reminds me of when they blame women for pregnancy, as if he had nothing to do with it. There's a woman in the audience. She's like, "What? What?" <laughs> 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 This, um, this idea that, uh, you know, to keep women down that's going on yeah. in the country. But Sonny, you this said is you just had another friends. aspect of it. I don't know. It looked like Looney Town, Looney Town to me. Yeah, Looney Town. Notice that no one, though, contested the facts of what we said. In fact, later in the show, one of those same hosts admitted that, in fact, women do strongly prefer marrying men who make more than they do. So it's true, but it's not on the list of approved talking points, so it can't ever be said out loud. Those are the rules, and anyone who violates those rules must be punished. This is very common, and if you're wondering how we wound up in the dark age we're currently living through, this is how we did. This is why important science is no longer being conducted. This is why art isn't being made. This is why comedy is dying. It's why people aren't thinking for themselves anymore, which means the end of creativity. It's why the rest of us stand by like cowards as the innocent are punished for crimes they didn't commit, because we're all terrified. We're terrified of being denounced by some mindless ideologue on TV or shamed and ostracized on social media for stepping out of line or silenced completely by some big tech firm. A mob of angry children is suddenly in charge of the country. These aren't people seeking a revolution. They're fighting for the status quo to protect their own status. They are drunk on power, and they're looking for new people to hurt. Someday, we're going to look back on this moment with shame and horror. But in the meantime, we should remember that terror only works if we play along with it. So what if we decided not to? What if all of us decided to tell the truth about something every day in public. What would happen then? What could they do about it? They can't punish everybody. We're the majority. Let's try that.